This episode of On The Line is brought to you courtesy the sports company of Trinidad and Tobago. This time we're on the line with Kellyanne Bautista and Marshall Cedeno. I've learned a lot about the art of sprinting, so I'm going to show them exactly what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> In every sport, there's a line. All athletes put themselves on the line for club and country. Because I know the 100, it's a shorter distance, but especially like in the, in the yeah. 400, are you spending a lot of time focusing on staying in the lane? I mean, you have to stay in the lane because yeah. 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 I mean, you're trying to run as close at the inside as possible. Just touching the line, even on the outside here, if they catch you, that's, the, that's disqualification. It's a certain amount of times, yeah. Like, you can't do it like a certain amount of times. Long time, Bled, when Bled, man back in the curve, that is a so Bled, man starting set, go! <laughs> I teach you how to start. I teach you was in, in Crystal Palace. So you said, man, you start so, boy. I said, boy, you can start now. I said, what are you doing? G, you doing so. But I just start like this. <laughs> so I said, G, you just split your hand with power him. Thing. I said, hey, who did you do, boy? That was dog showing me. But I know you did. Memphis, I think you don't know Memphis, I think never mm. Memphis, when I used to know. one year blem, I was supposed to get a good cut screen, but yeah. you run for him. Yeah. Ball ham, string and thing. What a bit bad! What a bit bad! How do you deal with the testosterone now? In the sense that there's no... I have headphones, I just tune them out in my headphones. Kelly's the, uh, I'd say the ultimate professional. She wants to be as good as she can be at everything that she does all the time. Um, sometimes that's a very good trait. Sometimes it's a little, <laughs> a little hard to deal with, but it's, it's just part of, um, you know, who she is. And you know, there's nothing want, nothing wrong with wanting to be great. It's just um, making sure that every day you're checking your boxes and you're making your progress like you're supposed to. What, in terms of their readiness for Rio 2016 coming up, um, how are you feeling? With their training well it's i mean it's still april but you know training's going well um you know we're going to start doing some races here soon get a better idea of where everybody is from there but um at the end of the day there's there's only really two meets that matter and that's the uh championships in trinidad to make the team and then the olympic games so everything we're doing now and, and going forward is getting ready for the, those two different weekends coach do you see medals in our future well that's the whole reason we do this so we better Style. Yeah, everybody has a different style of what they coach and I think, um, well here you reinforce more of um, hip movement, keeping your hips up, keeping your toe up, 
getting that knee drive, engaging your glutes and stuff like that. Right. So this first drill is pretty much that. It's a walking drill. It's kind of like you taking baby steps. And the key, the, the key to this is keeping your hips up and making sure that when you land, you're not pointing down. Because striking the track pointing down, with you striking the track like that, it's a different oh, power that's, that's going into the track. Yeah. Is that when I see you guys doing <laughs> this sort of fancy coordination thing? Yeah. Yeah, it's to keep you tall up so you could apply power to the track. Height has a lot to do with specific abilities that somebody has. So for example, Shelly and Fraser is, you find that much more shorter people have a very explosive start. That's right. just what they're going to be gifted with. Big, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that over time, that Khalifa is going to be the same way given her height and her stature. She's going to eventually become a really good, great starter because of how she's built. She's shorter than I am, and I don't see her really growing. Yeah. So I can see her developing into a really great starter. Whereas the taller people Four like... Nervous. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. yeah, I see it. I see it. In sprinting, you don't want to land flat at all. That's dead, that's right. dead weight. You know what I mean? On the ball. ball. So if you're too far forward, you tend to overreach and overstride and land flat, and you're just yeah. taking a lot of time. So for me personally, when I go down, I want to be. I want to be a little bit forward, but not like this. Right. Like this, this is not something I could control. Ready, set. <laughs> no. I'm not even faking it. <laughs> it took a lot to beat up. And what you probably could have had is a cramp, and I've had those before. A really um, intense cramp, and that could be because you're tight, or your muscles may not have been warm enough to yeah, actually go that speed. speed, you know what I mean? So, so yeah. Exercise just to do like this? Um, you wouldn't really try to stretch on it much, to be honest. You just Don't try to... Yeah, don't try to overstretch it, just leave it. Ice. <laughs> ice. So we, we do have to hit the ice bath. You have the ice. Right. And there um, we go, ice bath for it. <laughs> this is after a hard workout. This is the reward Kelly says we get for a hard workout. Make sure the hamstrings are nice and rejuvenated. And I actually have a real life injury. Um, but you're saying we have to last two minutes, at least. At least three minutes. One. One and a half. <laughs> Two. Three. <laughs> this is as much as we have to go, right? I mean, I'm supposed to go down, but I'm gonna let my legs be privatized a little bit. Oh. Okay, why do I, why did I talk myself into this? Or let you talk me into this? <laughs> Five seconds. hard you know <laughs> I've done the ice bath do you think I deserve some to eat now <laughs> yeah I mean food is like a form of recovery as well so you know you expend all that energy out there you need to put it back in so yeah so what, what are you suggesting some carbs and some protein so a little rice and um, chicken and I know this Jamaican spot right down the street good. Um, definitely good What do you normally get? Um, rice and chicken. What kind of chicken? Joe? No. You guys have rice and peas, right? Yes. Yeah. Can I have a jerk chicken meal? Small. Food is dumplings with anything. Crab, <laughs> Crab chicken.
fucking Orlando. You think you, 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 everything's going as planned for real? I think so. I'm just taking everything in stride, taking my time, not trying to see, uh, look too far down the road, and just taking each training day, day by day, moment by moment. I think that's the best approach um, to going into a championship, not to think too far down the road. Do, um, do you get psyched out at all by any of your competitors? I wouldn't say I get psyched out, but I get probably, um, they keep me on edge. I mean, on my toes, they're training, where training is concerned. And, you know, if you see during the season your competitors are running certain times or whatever the case may be, you're just aware of it and it keeps you motivated. So you, you went from here in Claremont <laughs> to, Orlando, to Miramar mm -hmm. and back at Claremont. What's, what's the special factor in Claremont? When I'm here, it's just away from everything. Um, I could come, I could train, and I want to say not be bothered, but it's just, it's, an, it's the environment. I think that's a big thing. Um, also having, you know, recovery methods within proximity, like an acupuncturist, massage therapist, chiropractor, all those things are really big for your recovery, you know? And so I think that's really one of the big things. And also, I think being in a group environment, you know, there's Keston here, there's Marshall here, Jay is here. And so having that type of camaraderie support is really big for an athlete. You've had a, a lot of ups and downs in your career. Mm -hmm. What what would you recall as maybe some of the most difficult times where you really thought, you know, do I, should I still continue to do this? So and, and what, what picked you back up to continue flying the red, white and black? But in 2013 when I had the suspension, that was a really tough time for me. But it also wanted me to get back in the sport and fight. It gave me a different hunger because I just knew that I was blessed with a talent and that was just a mishap and I really wanted to show the world that hey like I can still run fast like whatever yeah. the situation happened like that's just a mistake um, and things like that happen but I'm naturally fast I'm naturally talented and so I was so eager to get back out there and compete and I felt like I proved myself by staying off the sport for a year and coming back and making the world championship final and so I was even though I didn't get a medal weirdly enough that was probably one of my proudest accomplishments. What? What really happened? You know, there was a lot of skirting around it. Mm -hmm. um, there was a B sample or an A sample and mm -hmm. the B sample was never tested. What was, what's your take on, on everything that happened? In, um, in the simplest way, the simplest way I could put it is that I was seeing a nutritionist. Um, he, recommend, he recommended some vitamins to me that he probably didn't take the time out to really see what was in there that could have been on the ban list. And I just ended up in a situation where of his negligence and my negligence, I could say, because I can't really blame him because yeah. in the sport, they're telling you that you're responsible for what goes into your own body. Mm -hmm. So I had to, I would say that I wasn't vigilant enough in doing my own research and my own studies and ended up with a positive test and that's really it. Um, the doctor told me that the products I was taking was all natural and obviously it wasn't and I ended up with a suspension. Do you feel that you got the support from Trinidad and Tobago when this, this all went down? Yeah, it definitely showed me that I had some real fans and the country of Trinidad and Tobago was just 100% behind me. So 2016, do you think that you have something to prove not just to yourself <laughs> but to turn around 2012? Um, yeah, I mean 2012 was rough. I remember walking back and crying because I was like, I can't believe I didn't get a medal. But I believe 2016 is a great year and I feel like if I have the experience now, now, I've been there, done that before, which a lot of people can't really say that. So um, I'm ready for the challenge and I'm really looking forward to it. Of course, many people don't know that Kelly is an undergrad in psychology. <laughs> and But you said you, there was a toss-up between, you know, after you hang up your boots, between yeah. psychology and health and fitness. Yeah. What, 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 where, where are you siding more to? <laughs> I don't know, it's hard because I like health and fitness. I actually like doing Pilates. Pilates is something I love doing and I always thought about I could, probably could be a Pilates instructor and you know I like health stuff. I like to juice, I like to eat healthy. I, that's just something that's I like doing. Like I like that but I also like helping people on an emotional level. You know and maybe it's because I know I could I could completely say that I know as a person that I've struggled with confidence and self-esteem and stuff like that in my own abilities and it took you know, for me, I wouldn't, though I had encouragement, it took to me proving to myself through performances and stuff to get to the point where I am. But if I could help somebody before you even get to that point, just have confidence in yourself, then I feel like if I'll be doing a great deal of justice. So what is it, what is it people don't know about <laughs> Kelly Ambertis? 
but I don't think I've ever really shared um, confidence issues before with any um, reporter. But I grew up, I grew up, I would say, feeling outcasted a lot, you know. And I grew up as a very as somebody who was teased in school and stuff like that and it was really hard and track was my real escape and you know I always wanted to use track especially for um, young females it's hard for a female to really um, have self-confidence you know and sometimes it's easy to go look for it in other things you know what I mean whether it's partying boys whatever the case may be and I really wanted to use my athletic ability to help females you know to, to show them that it's okay to have um, to have confidence in yourself yeah. and that um, doesn't matter what background you come from you know I, I wasn't I didn't grow up in the wealthiest of environments um, that I believe that once you have a strong mind once you have faith yeah. that you anyone can make it it doesn't take you don't have to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth you just have to find something that you relentless about that you love. I remember when I used to go to practice on Carnival and when people used to ask I'm crazy, why are you going to practice? You know what I mean? Like ultimately, ultimately, I would say that I really want to win an Olympic gold medal. But to be honest, if I were to just be on the podium in an individual event, not just, I'm not even talking about really on, in an individual event, if I were to be on the podium as an Olympic medalist, like I wouldn't be able to contain myself. Like that would be something that- I wouldn't be able to contain myself. <laughs> This is your first Olympics. How, yeah. how, how's that feeling? Um, it, is, it, it is exciting for me, you know, being there the first time and not being not being able to compete. You know, this I'm really looking forward to going this Olympics and you know enjoying myself and making my country proud. So nationals last year was a bit of a disappointment for you. You know, like there was all that fanfare, and then moments later you found out you went to Rennie Quao. Well, you know, how did you bring yourself back from that and continue to forge forward and continue being more sheltered than you? Um, well, you know, in life, it, you, you have obstacles in front of your way. Um, is the way you deal with them. I know I think I, I dealt with mine in the right way. You know, I, I put it in the past, I move on. I went to the Pan Am Games and, you know, get a silver. So, you know, I didn't really dwell too much on, you know, the mistakes I made in the past. I you know I just keep moving forward and keep pushing. What's the realistic goal that you set yourself for, for real? Um, I could see myself going into Rio making the finals with a with a blank mind, you know, I'm gonna blank out all my competitions around me, all the all the hype, I'm just gonna go in there and you know, give it my hundred percent and wherever my hundred percent gets me, you know, I'll I'll thank God and I'll take it. The, the camaraderie that I've seen so far in the camp, Keston, JQ, Kelly, are they are they helping you um, towards towards Rio in, in the sense that preparing you for what to ex expect at Rio? Yeah, you know, to have a Trini conting a contingent here, you know, it's it's really satisfying to know that, you know, we are a small island with so much talent. So, you know, with the half the talent being here, there's just like four athletes named we just call it there being there, you know, we all motivate each other and push each other because we doing this for our country, you know, we're making a sacrifice out there, you know, living on our own. Um, waking up every morning, going to practice. So you know, it's like you know, there's a big camp you know, with all different countries, and you know, at the, at the end of the day, yeah. it's only your country you can represent. I'm not going to represent my Adidas camp or or my coach. I'm going to represent my country and myself. So you know, it's you know, it's a really nice feeling to see yourself and other training athletes out there. You know, because we all put it all together, and you know, we all trying to make our country proud. If you read like the most successful people, they all have a story that go behind that goes behind the name. So. You know, I don't mind, you know, the sacrifice I made throughout my life, so I'm in a happy spot. I'm glad where I am today, so it's, it's all paying off. Back in 2010 is when I made my first career and, you know, um, I think I just did, like, the 4x4 four four there. And, you know, from being in a... That was, like, my first regional international competition, and, you know, that motivate me and you know that tell me that that shows me that you know this is a career I don't mind making to myself and you know through the years I just keep growing in the sport um like I made the World Olympics when I was like 16 years old and, you know I wasn't granted the opportunity to compete how, how did you dig yourself from that moment that disappointment then didn't really dwell on it too much you know I went back with like an open mind and you know I said you know everything happened for a reason God maybe had a plan so you know, I went back to the drawing board. I correct a lot of stuff. You know, my attitude towards the sport, my my attitude in training, my attitude off the track. You know, there's a, a whole like I was still young, so I was still doing like I probably was still like partying, I was still staying up talking, to, talking on the phone late in the night. So you know, I 
I that's at a point in my life where I say, you know, this this is time to get serious. I know that's when I really, you know, settled into the sport and had a and had a, a big man mentality. <laughs> you understand? A lot of times I wanted to give up all of this, you know, just to go back home and have fun with my friends. But you know, um, you know, I talk to my mom. You know, I have a really close relationship with my mom. You know, she she makes sure she have she makes sure I have a make sure I'm focused. So you know, as as a young athlete in a grown man sport, you know, um, I tend to lose a lot of focus a lot of times. So you know, it's, it's the people I keep around me that you know like really push me and motivate me to keep going to the top and keep climbing and not to go back. What's the one thing you think most what I'm looking forward to? The first thing I want to do when I reach the Rio. You know, the biggest thing for me looking, the biggest thing I'm looking forward in Rio is you know going out there with the whole Trini contingent and you know everyone who. Who put in their sacrifice, put in their work, and make it to the Olympics, which is almost everyone highest sport, highest level of any sporting event. So you know, it's a really good feeling to go out there. Would be a really good feeling to go out there to the opening ceremony and wear my country colours. Marshall, final question: What would you say is your biggest sacrifice? Coming from a home, I have two parents, so you know, it's from me moving from a home with two parents to me moving here and living on my own. So that was a big sacrifice for me. I had to learn how to cook. I had to learn how to clean, I had to learn how to, to basically see about myself. So I had to adapt to a whole new lifestyle when I came up here. So, you know, and it, to me it was a good thing, you know, I, I didn't mind adapting to somebody else's culture. You know, it was a, a learning experience for me as well. So, you know, every day I'm learning new stuff about the United States of America, you know, I'm learning new stuff about, you know, every country I go. I don't just go to a country and go to meet. When I go to a, a country, a different country, and I go to meet, I learn the history. I learn, you know, who was probably, who was a president or who, who is the fastest person from this country, who is a record holder from this country in my event. I couldn't meet you on the track. Um, I can't think of a sport because you said you're good at football and cricket, so I'm not going to try and beat you at a sport. <laughs> but maybe, maybe, just, maybe, just maybe, a game of pool. Yeah. <laughs> I think, think I'm going to try my hand at that. You yeah. Agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One victory. <laughs> Thanks very much for being on the line. Yeah, man. That was a pleasure to, to, be, to be on the line. To be. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be on the line. <laughs>